Hello. Hello, Miami City Valley Instagram. Gonna let everyone join in here while we get ready. Just trying to get my music set up. Doesn't seem to want to be playing today. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, there we go. A little just classical music on in the background. Thank you all for joining me today for um, our Miami City Ballet, Ballet Stretch and Strengthen class. I am principal soloist with the company, Lauren Fadley, and I'm so glad to have you all here starting your week off with some nice flow movement, some stretching, some strengthening, and some um, ballet incorporated in there. Ballet is such a wonderful art form, but it's also very athletic, and um, I want to teach you some, you know, basic ballet steps that can help us um, become better physically and mentally as well. So um, everything we do today, you can just follow along with me. If you have any light weights, that would be great. Something to help support you is also a good idea. And um, I'll be on the mat if you have a towel. Any of those things are, are great to get started with. Also, just of note, I am now seven months pregnant. So um, yes, this belly is not just from not dancing, um, but I um, everything that I do, you will all obviously be able to do as well hopefully so but please modify whenever you need to as we all want to be as safe as possible so I'm going to turn the comments off for right now and we will get started so we're going to just start on our mat anywhere seated that's a nice comfortable place for you I'm going to have a towel underneath my seat here just to elevate a little bit keeping so it opens up your hips a little more keeps them nice and flat a little bit more comfortable you can do whatever is best for you a pillow anything like that but we're just going to start by closing our eyes and doing a few seated just breaths in and out to start relaxing our body and get ready for the day so go ahead and close your eyes and do a deep breath inhale through the nose and exhale. Inhale through the nose, really filling up your abdominal and pressing all that air out. One more deep breath in and sigh it out. Go ahead and open your eyes up. We're going to do some isolation seated right now to slowly warm our body up before we get fully moving. It's very important as a dancer that we warm our bodies up correctly and don't just start going into our full movements right away to prevent injury. So we're just going to start taking your right hand. Things will look a little flipped on the Instagram Live if this is your first time joining us. So as long as you balance yourself out, it's okay which arm you start with. So this is my right arm, might look like the left arm. I'm gonna take my head and tilt it over towards the right side. Just getting that nice stretch in the neck, helping release some of that tension we might be holding on during this difficult time. And left arm over to the left side. Feeling that length, trying not to crunch your shoulders, but just lengthening. That's another thing that's important in ballet is feeling the length and the energy throughout. Taking both hands behind the neck, we're gonna do just like a nice little pull down. Feeling both sides of the neck and that chin towards your chest. And the last one, we're gonna take our hands, clasp them behind our back, reach up and lift your neck up and open. And down. And let's just take a few head circles towards the right. Like get a little pop in there like I just did. Loosening up your neck and your shoulders. And to the left. You can close your eyes here. If that feels comfortable for you. And one more. And we will finish back here. We're going 
to take our arms out to the side. You're going to take your left arm underneath your right arm and we're going to cross them. So one more time, that left under right crossing and then we kind of fold them up, making sure we're using that pressure here to help lift up out of your back. So it should be lengthening the back, pulling those shoulders up and out. And we'll open them and let's reverse. Right arm under left, crossing. And then if you can, linking those hands just to help get some resistance and then lifting up. Taking a deep breath here, opening up that back and shoulders and release. Okay, now we're just going to take a nice little stretch over to the right side, keeping your feet however is comfortable for you. And up and to the left, opening up your sides and back up. Really important here that we keep both sides of our hip on the floor, not rocking or anything like that. Really trying to keep it nice and flat. We're going to use our port de bras. So we lift up over, looking towards your hand. You can put your other hand on the floor with your elbow for a little deeper stretch. Coming back up, really following that hand that we're engaging the whole body. It's really important also as dancers that from the very beginning of class, even though we're isolating the, the movements that we're doing, that we start to engage and warm up the whole body as by the end of class, we're pretty much using every muscle in our body that's possible. And over, and we'll come back up. Let's take our feet now together here in a little cobbler pose or butterfly pose. We can actually do a few little butterfly here to open up those hips. And let's just take a nice deep breath in, reaching up and going forward. Only if this is comfortable for your hips and only as far as it is capable for you. No pushing anything too long and not holding anything too long. But feeling your knees down and out and coming back up. Let's put both feet out in front of us. We want to sit up nice and tall. This is another nice reason to have something underneath your seat here. Kind of helps with that length so that we're not tucking our pelvis and not arching it, but keeping it nice and neutral and actually kind of engaging those, um, your ribs and your abdominals while you're seated here. So we're just gonna take a few flexes and points with our feet. So two feet flexing towards the sky and rolling through those toes. Really important in ballet as well that we don't just flex and point without going through our toes. We really want to articulate every single metatarsal and ligament in there. Also, another thing that is important is that we go right straight down, almost to the second metatarsal, and then we roll back up so that there's no sickling or too much winging. Just nice straight down and up. This will warm us up for our releves that we will do later. Now, keeping them flexed, we're going to work on our turnout. We're going to open our hips almost into a little first position and back to parallel. Really isolating just the, the inner thigh muscles here. So from the thigh bones, rotating, lifting up, and coming back to parallel. So we're not shifting our torso anyway to get this. We're really just using our genuine inner thigh muscles and our turnout here. Good, and then let's just make a few circles with our ankles, lengthening them out. You can go outward and then both inward. And then let's just kind of shake those legs out. We are now going to roll over onto our hands and knees so you can remove anything that you were sitting on. We're going to go into a flat tabletop. So we're on all fours. We really want to make sure that our back is nice and flat. Our protecting our wrists by making sure that they're straight down from our shoulders, not moving your elbows in any direction. Really trying to keep them facing towards you. We're going to do a few cat-cow poses here. So starting with the cow, we're going to breathe in, lifting up, and exhale into a cat. Your spine towards 
towards the ceiling. And go ahead through this at your own pace, back and forth. Not pushing anything too hard, just going with the movement of your own spine, but warming that up through the whole body and really using the breath to help you. So one more. Exhale and down. Now we're going to do a little circle here. So our pelvis is going to move the opposite direction as the rest of our body. So kind of pushing through, making a nice big circle with the chest, reaching back down towards your heels. Not too big, but just kind of warming up that whole body. And then we can reverse the other direction. It's nicely warm. This is also good for prenatal, any other expected mamas out there. Lots of cat cows and stretching of that back. Okay, let's come up now into a downward dog. So turning your heels underneath here, we're going to press up, lifting our hips, sending our heels down into the mat. It's okay if they don't touch the mat, but the goal is to slowly send the weight back towards the heels, lengthening the spine through your arms. Again, protecting those elbows, not rotating. Let's just do a few up and down through our feet. Pedal pushing those feet right and left, alternating up and down. A few times starting to feel the length in the hamstrings and the calves. And let's put both heels down, lifting both heels up together. And down and releve. Try to keep your shoulders down through all this as well. One more time, up and down. Now, from here, we're gonna go into a plank. Just gonna shift our weight forward. So we're already in this position. We just shift forward, keeping that pelvis down, hold for a breath, and we go back to downward dog. And again, plank, nice and strong and flat, and back down to downward dog. A few more times. Really starting to engage the abdominal muscles, feeling the length of the neck and the shoulders, the strength in the back as well. Back to downward dog. One more time. Plank. And we're going to start to lower. We're just going to do a little bit of an up dog here, stretching that out. You can turn your toes over. And let's go into a child's pose here. So pushing those hips back, again, lengthening through the shoulders and the arms, reaching towards the edge of your mat, stretching everything out. And coming back up. Okay, now we are going to take a seat onto the side of our mat here. So I think everyone can see me if I'm facing this way. Two legs are going to be stacked on top of each other. We're going to put, let's see how far we want to go down. We can do this. So actually take your right arm or your left, if you're starting on your left side, use your elbow against the floor and that can support your neck here. The other hand can just be placed for some stability. Nothing too, too much to help us. We're just going to do a few little clamshells here. So our hips are nice and stacked on top with our knees here. And we're just going to open the top leg without using any other muscles except that gluteus medius. So normally we're working the maximus, which is the, the very large outside part. But this is gonna help target the inside and also the stability of our inner thigh muscles, as well as our pelvic floor. So just lifting up as much as you can without rotating anything else in the body. We don't want to shift the hips, the torso, anything else. Again, this hand is just here to help stabilize. You can point your toes. So thinking about those toes coming together as you lift and place back down. A few more times, you should really start to feel that rotator from underneath. So not so much that 
that big muscle that we'll target later, but this is just engaging the gluteus medius. Now we're going to take that top left leg, place it onto the mat in front while we lengthen the right leg underneath. So the right leg is now flat on the mat, the left leg is turned out and up against it, kind of just for some stability. And now we're going to do some inner thigh work with the alternate leg. So we're just slowly lifting up and placing back down. Again, literally just using that inner thigh muscle. No other shifting, not trying to hike it up too high. It's just that little bit of lift and you should start to feel the engagement pretty quickly there. Just a few times, inner thigh muscles up and down. Keeping that foot flexed, trying to feel the length throughout the leg. We never want to grip in ballet. Sometimes um, our muscles are, you know, can become very strong and we, we overuse them, but we always want to feel the length throughout. Good. Let's come back up, pushing yourself up to a seated position. Let's stretch out those hips there. So taking your right leg on top of the left to a nice little square rectangle position here. Let's just look up and over, feeling length in both the hips, and coming back up. Let's go ahead and switch, other leg on top, nice and square, reaching those arms up, nice deep breath forward, feeling the stretch before we go to the left side and come back up. So, we will now have our left hand on the mat, or actually we'll have our elbow supporting our head. Down here we have the right leg stacked on top of the left leg, and the right hand against the mat. Just to help with that stability, but not using any of the, the rest of the body. It's just to keep us nice and square here. So we're going to clamshell lifting that leg up and down. If you literally just think of a clam opening and closing, right? There's no other way for it to go except up and down. So really using that inner back glute muscle for this. And again, it doesn't have, it's not, it doesn't have to be flat to the sky. It can just be a nice little open, whatever is available for you and your body to do it correctly without there being any extra movement. And pointing those toes, keeping those toes kind of kissing while we just isolate that top leg. Up and down, should start to feel it burning pretty quickly. Let's do one more. And down. Now, switching the legs. As the left leg extends flat onto the floor, the right leg comes up. So using that turnout actually to hold this position, but we're going to be focusing more on the leg on the floor. So if your left leg is down, we're going to slowly lift it up and place it down. Really lengthening through the back of the heel. Again, no movement anywhere else in the upper body. Literally just feeling that tiny bit of our inner thigh lifting up and down, warming up that muscle for later when we start to do things standing with our plies and such. Just a few more times. This will also help with the stability of your pelvis. And coming back up. Okay, so from here, we're going to stretch it out again, but let's go towards our back. So, again, if you need something that you want to place underneath your head to help you prop up, I know that I have to, as a seven-month pregnant woman, have, so I can keep my breath going. So placing the feet flat on the floor, and you can lay on a pillow or anything else that you need to prop yourself up. Let's take our right leg across from that left leg, bringing that left leg up and taking a nice little pull in. You can take it from behind the knee, on top of the knee, whatever feels good for you. Just stretch out that glute. The 
and just briefly, let's open the legs, take a nice little straddle stretch. It doesn't have to go all the way to the floor like a ballerina, but just kind of opening up those thighs that we just worked and crossing over to the other side. So the left leg is on top of the right. We're pulling the right towards us, stretching out the glutes. And then one more time, you can just use your hands to kind of help you. Again, it doesn't have to go all the way flat, but just that little bit of the stretch in the inner thighs. And let's take our legs back up here to a little tabletop position. We're in a 90 degree position. We're going to have our hands on the floor. We're just going to do a few little toe touches here, one leg at a time. This is going to help engage your abdominal muscles. Feeling those ribs corseting and coming right back up to this neutral position of the legs. So we're not just alternating one at a time. We're going back up and down, pointing those toes towards the floor. Try not to grip in the hips. One more and back down. And then let's just lift that pelvis up slowly Starting with a contraction, engaging, lifting up towards the sky, trying to keep those legs nice and neutral, not opening or closing too much, rolling back down, feeling that neutral spine. Again, tuck your tailbone, lifting up, releasing back down. One more time. Just again, feel the length in the back of the legs, stretching the lower back, and back down. Let's come back up to a seated position here. Let's roll over again onto our hands and knees. Let's take one more child's pose before we stand up, sending those hips back towards our heels. Reaching the arms forward towards the mat. Back up onto all fours, tucking those feet, back up into our downward dog. Feeling the stretch again, go ahead and do whatever feels nice for you in this position. Then we're going to slowly take our hands, walking them back towards our heels. Oops, careful if you have something behind you. Go ahead and take either arm, kind of help to Pull down on that lower back, swaying side to side. Whatever feels good for you. And then we're going to slowly roll up vertebrae by vertebrae to a nice standing position. Okay, so hopefully we're starting to feel nice and warm here. Just want to check our time. Good. We're going to do some center work now. So if you have any light weights, now is a good time to grab those. Can you move anything else out of the way? So these are just three pound weights, nothing too, too heavy here. We're just using it as resistance. And if you don't have anything, that is perfectly fine as well. We don't, we don't need to have that added weight to still um, really use our arms. The most important thing here is that every time we use our arms, that they're coming from our back, that we're keeping our neck nice and long, our chins lifted, so that it doesn't just become an aimless movement, but every time we move our arm, that those elbows stay lifted and there's a resistance, almost like you're underwater. So we're going to start in our first position, for those of us who have been taking the classes this past month. Um, trying to have our heels as close together as possible, but what's really important is that the knees stay nice and long and lifted. They don't need to be flat turned out as long as we're using that rotation in the inner thighs that we just found while we were on the floor. So we will start with our plies, holding our, our weight, but then our arms are going to be in the, what we call our preparation position, and then we plie, we lift the arms to first position. So this is a first position plie with our first position arms. Really important that you keep those shoulders down and that chin lifted. We have a nice apomal, which is the carriage of the head. You never want to see a dancer 
that's just kind of staring down, right? We always want to have that nice, elegant neck and head. Just a few more plies here, really making sure the knees go over the toes, rotating those thighs. No weight in the heel. The heels are on the floor, but we're sending it towards our toes. Good, now we're going to do a little tondu, it's where we stretch our foot out and point it, and we will go into what we call second position. Second position should only be as wide as your foot. So you tondu and you place it down. Nothing too big, we're not doing a squat, we're doing a ballet second position here. Our arms for second position are out to the side, mimicking what our legs are doing. Everything in ballet, the legs and the arms complement each other. It's very rare that you see something that does not um, coordinate with the arms. So arms are in second. As we plie, we'll bring them into first and open to second. Again, the knees are right over the toes. We're not just bending the knees, but we're spiraling the inner thighs. We're engaging the glute muscles that we found earlier. Again, nice long neck, keeping your elbows lifted here, right? We don't drop our elbows and bring them in. They really should stay up. That's where we're gonna feel that burn in our arms and our back. A few more times. This is a demi-plie, so we don't go too far. Again, not like a squat where we're sticking our pelvis out. We wanna be nice and flat, as much as you can with the baby. <laughs> but that you're almost like you're up against a wall. That's going to force you to use those inner thigh muscles. A few more. And let's come back to first. In first now we're going to do arms in first. As we plie, we lift to fifth high. So fifth is the exact same position as first, just above our head. What's important is that they don't go behind our head. We want to, again, keep those elbows lifted. And that's what brings our arms up to the fifth. Shoulders down, neck held. A few more times. Just start to feel the shoulders engage as well. Good, and let's hon you to second. Second position. Holding those arms, lifting to the fifth. Do not let your arms get behind you. You want to have that peripheral view of your hands at all times. Not only in the fifth position, but also in the second position. So that the ribs stay held. Again, everything flat, all that's moving are the arms and the knees bending. Two more. And finish. Okay, we're not done with the waist yet, but let's put them down for one second so we can stretch out those arms. Let's take that right arm across the body, left arm up. Go ahead and take a nice stretch. Shoulders. Nice deep breath in. Open them up. Switch to the other side. Back and forth. And now up and over our head, right arm across, left arm to help pull. Again, nothing past your limit, just opening up those shoulders, stretching out that work that we just did, and reversing. Left arm, right, pulling back down towards the back and up. Now let's take both arms here, interlaced. In parallel, reaching up and a breath as we go forward. Bringing those arms over the head to start to stretch out the front of those pec muscles that we just worked. And coming back up. Okay, so we're going to do one more thing here with our weights. Again, if the weights are too much, you do not have to keep using the weights. You can put the weights down. You can just use the resistance of your arms for this because it's going to be a little more complicated with our legs here. So we're going to be in our first position and we are going to do like what we did last week is a degage. 
That means to disengage. So it's like a tendu, but degage is a little bit higher off the floor, not too high. No more than 45 degrees off the floor, but we're disengaging from the floor. So we, I'll show the legs first. We're going to degage the leg, and we're going to tombe forward. Tombe in French means to fall. All of our terms in ballet come from French, and the steps mimic what they actually mean. So we tombe forward, which is a plie over that front foot. The back leg is going to stay straight. Then we're going to dégagé, push back, and close to first. Okay, so one more time, I'm going to show that on the other leg. We dégagé right in front of us, pointing those toes. We're going to tombe forward. Really important that as we turn that leg out, the knee is over the toe, the back leg is straight. We're going to push from our toes back to dégagé and close to first. Then we are going to incorporate the arms. The arms should actually help with your balance here. So we are going to dégagé, arms in second, tombe, fall forward to first, push back up, and close. Other leg, dégagé front, tombe forward first position, dégagé, and first. Just alternating right now to the front, tombe, and first, dégagé, tombe front, dégagé, and first. Few more times. Again, every time the arms move, the elbows are staying lifted. They're literally out to the side, coming forward, no movement. Really important here too. We tombe, we plie over that leg, we push through the toes to help us get back up. Also using your core here, to help that balance. Okay, let's try this in second position. So we will be in our first, we're going to dégagé to the side, tombe to the side. So trying to use that turnout again, doesn't need to be flat turned out. What's most important is the knee is over the toe. So we'll push back to the dégagé and close first, then to the other side. Dégagé with the left leg, tombe over, so we're in this second position almost, with one leg bent, back and close. We're going to alternate right and left for a few times, and again, we will use the same arms. If the weights are getting too much, go ahead and put them on the floor. What's really important here though, again, is that we keep those elbows lifted, that chest nice and open, and using those ribs. So as we open to the side, don't, open it out this way, right? Keeping everything nice and peripheral to come across and then we come back up. So we really have to use the supporting leg to help us stay on top of it and using that plie and that push through our toes, right? That's what we were talking about earlier in the beginning of class, that we can't just go like this, call that a, a dead fish on the bottom of our feet. We really want to use the articulation of our feet. This is how we jump in things as well. So first position, arms in second, dégagé, disengaging from the floor, tombe, falling to the side in first, dégagé, and close. Sorry, I'm trying to keep myself in the frame. Left side, dégagé, tombe, dégagé, and first. Alternating legs, plié, up, and first, dégagé, sat, tombe, dégagé, and close. Really nice to use those glutes that we found earlier to help stabilize you. Those are kind of your breaks here, right? And the whole thing is that we wanna make it look easy while we're dancing, right? Seems simple, but so many muscles are being used and held here to make it graceful, and strong at the same time. A few more times. Push, dégagé, tombe, dégagé, and first, last time, dégagé, tombe, dégagé, and we'll finish. Okay, shake those arms out. You still have to go to the back for arabesque. This one's a little tricky because the, the tendency is to try to initiate with your pelvis 
and we don't want that to happen. We really have to keep it nice and flat. Our tailbone flat against the floor, so not arched, not tucked. Really like you were standing up against the wall. Really trying to hold your stomach. Difficult for me, and the added uh, 20 pounds there makes it a little harder as well. But for you, really trying to engage those ribs coming together and using your arms down from your back so the whole thing is connected. So just for the legs, first position, we will dégagé to the back. Now right away from this first dégagé, not tilting this way if possible. You want to feel the length on your supporting side, no weight on that heel. Behind us, lengthen. As we tone bay, we use the turnout muscles to protect our knee over our toe. Nice flat back, and we push through those toes back to the arabesque and close. So on the left side, again, dégagé, don't shift forward. Lengthening, plie, knees over those toes, sending the weight right over those, those toes here, and then pushing yourself back up onto your supporting leg and closing. Okay, this will be the last time to the back. Same arms to try to kind of help with that balance. So, arms in second. Degage back. Tombe back, arms in first. Degage back to arabesque. Close first, left leg, degage. Tombe, only that back knee is bending. So we really have to feel the length on that leg so that when we come back up, we're lifting to hold. Degage, tombe, degage. And uh, also important here, not over going past, right? Peripheral, arms held. Don't splay those arms and those ribs should really start to feel your inner thigh muscles, those glutes, through the toes. A few more times, arabesque, tombe, arabesque, up, right, tombe, push, and back, tombe, push, and we will finish. Okay, done with the weights for now, you can move those out of the way. Now, just gonna check my time, we want to find something that we can hold on to that can help us stabilize. I obviously have a bar, because I have a studio in my house, because I'm a ballerina. But for the rest of us, you can use a chair, <laughs> um, you know, a sofa, any a countertop, anything that's going to help um, stabilize here. So we're going to do a few plies and relevés. Remember, plié means to bend, right? To fold our legs. Releve means to rise. So we're going to start again in our first position, even wherever our arms are, that they're, we're still keeping those shoulders down and lifted. We're going to push through our feet today. We're going to plie, push through to that demi point, straighten up, and then we roll down flat. Again, plie, weight goes right over the toes. We lift those heels, no movement, right over the second metatarsal, spiral the thighs that we just found, and back down. Again, plie, push, up, roll down, plie, demi point, releve, and hold. Now we're gonna do a few plies on demi point. Plie and up, feeling underneath the glutes, seven and eight, knees are still going over the toes, just like a regular plie with the heels down, really important that we protect our joints here, and up, let's take a little balance, first position arms like we just found, if you don't have weights anymore, it kind of feels kind of light, really holding those ribs, and rolling down. Good. Just kind of stretch our feet out. Push those toes over and the other. Really important when we're up on that demi point. Sorry, the sun is right there. But that we're nice and flat on our foot, right? We're not going towards our toes. We're not going towards our pinky. 
right over that second metatarsal where it's really strong on that demi point. So now we will do this in second position. Remember, not too wide, keeping that tailbone down and flat, rotated. We plie, knees over the toes, push over, straighten up, and rolling down. Always feeling the length, pushing over, we pull up through the entire body, and as we put those heels down, we lengthen the body. So nothing is stagnant. Even though the movements are kind of sharp, we're continuing that energy throughout the whole body. Push and up. Now we're going to stay here. Let's do our plie, releve, rotating those thighs, feeling those glutes. Seven and eight, tailbone down, chin lifted, shoulders down. I tell my young ones like you're wearing your diamond necklace and your tiara. Let's take a little balance now, arms in second position. Elbows lifted, nice and held, find that balance, and rolling down. Good. Let's just take here a few circles through our ankle and our foot, and reversing. Other leg, some circles through that ankle, stretching out those ligaments that are not natural to be up on your demi point like that. You can also stretch our calves out. You can go up against the wall, whichever is best for you. A few little plie bends and straighten. Get those calves. And switch. Another good thing for your feet is if you have a little bouncy ball, even a tennis ball, you can stick under there to roll. We have our, these bars here, right, to kind of help as well in just kind of stretching out those calves and those feet. Really important that we stretch after everything that we do as well so that we don't get injured. Okay, so let's move away from our bar here. We're going to finish up our class and um, we're going to do a little port de bras here to finish with the curtsy. And I thought that today it would be nice if we do the opening section of Serenade. It is a Balanchine ballet that is very, very famous. It was one of the first ones that he ever choreographed on. And um, it is a signature piece, obviously, of Miami City Ballet and something that's uh, very special for, for a lot of um, dancers. So we're just going to work on that and at the end it's very short and simple. Um, it's not going to be the traditional thing because at the end I will add a curtsy instead of the next step. So we're just going to start in sixth position. The arm begins out to the side and it's almost like you're shielding the light. That's what they said when he was choreographing the piece that there was some light he really liked to take things from um, the dancers and what they were experiencing in, in their lives in that moment. Um, so there was light coming into the studio and they couldn't see. And so he's like, that's beautiful. And it, and it absolutely is. So again, the shoulder, her arm, you know, nice and flat here, not behind us, not too much in front of us. A little bit here and we have nice fingers so you can see everything. We're in sixth position here. Ballet actually begins in sixth position. So you're shielding the light, you're looking over, you start with a little push towards that light, we reach up and over, our head following our hand, over to the side until it looks like we have a little headache here. Like, oh, oh, woe is me. Then from here, we turn the head and the hand together over to the side, looking over our right shoulder. From here, there's a little breath. We take both arms down to that preparation position as we look down towards our arms. Again, elbows nicely held. We rotate our feet into first position in one movement, kind of like we did on the floor, but now we're standing, so it's one. Really have to use those inner thighs to stabilize. Let's try that one more time. So you put the weight towards the heels, 
So using those inner thighs. And we take a nice breath of a time you're out. And right now we're going to do a curtsy to finish. And we will go back. Now we're going to do it on the left side. In the ballet, it only happens on the right, but let's, you know, balance ourselves out and finish our class nicely. So in sixth position, shielding the light, even here, right? So it's not just, it's not just here, but that you have that openness of the chest, the chin looking towards your fingers here. We press towards the fingers, we lift up our head, follows our hand as we go towards the other side. Feeling that arm right on that head. Then arm and hands together. Shifting over. So that head turns as the arm is on the other shoulder. From here, a nice little breath. Both arms down to preparation. Here is where we turn out first. Going to lengthen into our tondu and curtsy to finish. So that's all for today. Thank you all so much for joining me for the past month. I'm gonna turn my music down here. Oops, that's up. <laughs> and um, I hope that you all have had as much fun as I have had teaching these classes. And thank you all for joining me. And if you have someone that um, you think might want to start trying to get away from the, the light, there we go. <laughs> uh, actually shielding that light right now here in Miami. Um, the class will be up on the Miami City Ballet uh, Instagram live for the next 24 hours. And then we will get it posted for you to take again. Um, there's other ones that are up there on the YouTube channel, Miami City Ballet. So you can check those out if there's any ones that you missed or you want to take again. Um, there's also beginning ballet classes that have been taught by Jennifer Lauren that is now going to be taught by principal dancer Trisha Albertson starting on Saturday. That is at 10 a.m. This Thursday, uh, for more advanced dancers, we have a 6 o'clock p.m. class with principal dancer Reiner Krensetter. And um, for any of the Spanish-speaking out there that would like to have a class in your own language, uh, Principal Katya is teaching a class in Spanish, a beginning ballet class on Tuesday. So definitely check that out as well. So thank you all for joining me. It's been wonderful. And um, from Miami City Ballet and me, we're wishing you all the best, um, safe and happy during this time. So thank you all. Bye.